Hey guys, coming at you today with Keto Oreos. It took a lot of testing, but I figured it out, so let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Alicia and I'm a sous chef with a sweet tooth. And here we make delicious keto pastries from my time as a pastry chef. And my goal is to make them the best desserts possible. If you enjoy this content, please consider hitting the subscribe button down there. I'm coming at you every Saturday with a new keto dessert recipe. Now I got all my dry ingredients already sifted in a bowl, just giving them a whisk. And this is all my usual ingredients that I normally use, except for I added in this egg white protein powder. And it's kind of an essential ingredient because this is what gives a crispy cookie. I use this in my peanut butter patties video. I'll link that up there, my favorite Girl Scout cookies made keto. So this is something you can't really skip. I just got this on Amazon. There's a lot in here. I did try it without it, it did not work. I tried a bunch of different variations of this cookie. I got my coconut oil here. I melted it already. It's a half cup of coconut oil. We're gonna pop in some chocolate chip into the microwave just to give them a head start so that they'll melt easier in our coconut oil. If you don't do this, I find it's really hard to get the chocolate to melt. And I have my powdered monk fruit sweetener here. You can use Swerve or whatever other powdered you want, but I'm gonna put this sifted into here and give it a good whisk. You want this to be a nice smooth mixture. You want a nice fine sifter too. I used my bigger sifter and I still had little lumps in it. Get a nice smooth consistency on that. Just want to give them a little melt. They don't need to be fully melted because they're going in hot coconut oil. Get them all in there. I did try this with regular 85% cacao dark chocolate. It did not work. So I suggest using the Lily's dark chocolate chips. I'm not sure how any other will work in here. Oh, and I already have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And then we need a little bit more sweetness because of the dark chocolate and the cocoa powder. So I have a half teaspoon of liquid stevia and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract going into our wet ingredients. Just whisk it all together, make sure it's all incorporated. We're going to switch to a spatula. I have protein powder, which cuts down on the graininess of this cookie. So I wanted to incorporate protein powder, but the problem with protein powder is it makes things softer. So I had to figure out a way to make these crispy. So that's like the egg white protein, dark chocolate helps. So we're just putting this into our dry ingredients. And I do suggest weighing all your ingredients. It was definitely easier to get the right consistency you need if you weigh all your ingredients. It's gonna look like it's not gonna come together, but this dough is very strange. It's almost like kinetic sand. It's like wet but dry at the same time. But that's the texture you need. I tried adding more coconut flour. I've tried refrigerating it. I tried a bunch of different things to make it easier to work with. None of it worked. <laughs> So you just gotta kind of work with it as you can. I'll show you some tips and tricks to messing with it. I switch to my hands once it gets like almost too dry, but you wanna let this cool down for a little bit just because that coconut oil was warm, but you don't want it to dry out any. I already have my pan with parchment paper ready to go. Also, you're gonna need some kind of offset spatula or something thin and small that you can scoop your cookies up with and put them onto the parchment paper. Now you can do this part with a rolling pin, but you need it an eighth of an inch thick. And I bought this cool rolling pin that has like the bands on it. You have all these different sizes, but there's no eighth inch, surprisingly. I tried rolling it at all these different sizes and best thickness I found was an eighth of an inch. And then we're gonna flatten it down to be a thinner cookie. I have now biscuit cutters, but this one is the size that I want at the end of my cookie. And it's gonna end up being bigger because we're gonna flatten it. Smaller one is too small. This is a two inch cutter. So if that's all you have, you're gonna have a little bit bigger of Oreos, just like I do. See the texture's almost like, like it'll stay together, but it won't stay together. I'm gonna work with only half at a time. So on a clean surface, if you're gonna do this with your hands, if you're gonna roll it out, you need parchment on the bottom and parchment on the top, cause it is sticky. Pat it out into whatever shape you want, really. Work it out from the middle. The middle's always thicker than the outside. And I do have my six of an inch on here. I kind of try and test it. Yeah, it was 
pretty much the right thickness because it was a little bit thicker than the sixth of an inch. So I'm just gonna take my biscuit cutter and cut out my circles. Now, if you roll these out thin like you want them, for some reason they don't get crispy. They have to be like a thick cookie in order to get crispy. Otherwise, I would have just made them thin and that's why I had so many test batches because I kept trying to make them thin and I'm like, why are they not getting crispy? And I found out you gotta have them thick and then squish them down to make them thinner. Now, this dough is very finicky. It's kind of hard to get off the board. It likes to like mold itself back into itself, but just be gentle with it. Get it onto your parchment and then I just reshape it and kind of pat it out a little bit more until it's what I want. Like that. You don't need these super far apart because they're not going to spread at all, but we are going to be squishing them. So you do need them an inch apart about. Oh, see that guy broke. You can kind of just mold them back together. Like I said, I also tried refrigerating this dough because I thought, oh, that'll be easier. The cookies turned out dusty tasting. Like it, if they're not crunchy, they turn out dusty. And once the dough cools down a little bit and dries out a little bit, it's easier to work with. You might not get too crispy of a cookie at that point. If the cookie seems a little bit too thick to you after you punch it out, just squish it down a little bit more, punch it out again. So you should get 16 cookies, which makes eight Oreos out of this. Pay attention to where you're placing them. Unlike me, I had to move some around. They should easily fit on one pan. I'm gonna pop this in the oven for seven minutes total. I'll do four, turn it, three, and then I'll be back to show you what we do when they come out of the oven. Okay, when these come out of the oven, you want to squish them down as soon as they come out. They may crack a little bit, but they're gonna harden when they cool down, which this may be too hot for some people. I tried just doing a glass. I tried a measuring cup. It all stuck, even if I put avocado oil spray on it. Problem is you can't really see what you're doing. Well, that works pretty good. So if your hands are too sensitive to squish them by hand, use a piece of parchment paper and a measuring cup and try to squish it out as much as you can. Like I said, these are gonna make really big Oreos. If you get eight Oreos, they're still under two grams of net carbs each. Not too shabby. Try to apply even pressure. It won't crack as much. They are very warm. Whew. And you don't have to do this either. They will get crunchy even if you don't flatten them. I thought the cookie to cream ratio was a little off. It was a lot of cookie. They cool down really fast. So you wanna work quick while smooshing. Then you're gonna let these cool completely on the sheet tray. The Oreo filling is super simple. I actually just looked up an Oreo filling recipe online and I swapped out the shortening for butter. And our sweetener is two times as sweet, so I cut the sweetener in half and then I added a little bit more gelatin than it called for. Just gotta cream our butter to get it nice and smooth. We're only making a really small amount here, so it's kind of a pain in the butt in a stand mixer, but my hand mixer and immersion blender are all crazy in the last videos I've done them in. But you gotta keep scraping down if you're using your stand mixer because it's such a big bowl that it doesn't catch it all. And I'm gonna do one tablespoon of water in here and then three quarters of a teaspoon of gelatin into the water to bloom. And you wanna use cold water. I just have beef gelatin here, but you can use just the unflavored Knox gelatin also. I did that the first time, worked perfectly fine. Get all your gelatin, make sure it's all connected with the water, because you want it all saturated in there. Give this one more whip and we'll start adding our powdered sweetener. Now I already sifted out about how much I would need. I went over, that way it's gonna be easy to scoop it up and level it off. You need a half cup plus two tablespoons. Make sure your tablespoon is dry, otherwise it's all gonna get stuck in there. There you go, give it a whip. You're gonna need to give it a couple scrape downs because it's a little bit of butter. You gotta get it all incorporated. It's gonna look like it's not gonna come together, but it will. And I'm using the powdered monk fruit and erythritol together. It does give some of the cooling effect just because it's just so much sweetener, but we're not gonna put a ton in each cookie, which cuts it down a little bit. I did try using powdered allulose. Stuff I had wasn't powdered enough apparently because it was still super grainy. I did see online an allulose monk fruit powdered sweetener, which I may try in the future. It's getting all creamy in there. One more scrape. I'm gonna add in our quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Almost out of vanilla too, jeez. Basically the longer you whip it, the less grainy it's gonna be, which is actually pretty good. So one more whisk and then 
stupidly I realized I couldn't find the bowl I wanted to use to bloom my gelatin so I put it in this and then remembered we have to heat it up so I can't do it in metal it's gonna be all gelatinized anyway so it should be easy to transfer to a glass bowl which is what you want it in and I'm just gonna mic this for a couple of seconds until it's all melted it didn't take long at all I'm gonna Pour this into our mixture and then whip it real quick. Once it's mostly incorporated, give scrape down. Get all the stuff that's on the paddle because that stuff definitely does not get incorporated into your mixture and you want that all evenly in there. More. Okay, and I just have a pastry bag here that I already have the tip cut pretty big. Just fold it over your hand like that. And scoop your filling into the bag. It'll be all ready. Fill our Oreos. There you go. See, it's over your hand, so there's no mess. And then you just squeeze it down. There you go. My cookies are still warm. I'm gonna transfer them onto cooling racks so that they cool down faster. They are still a little bit fragile when they're warm, so just be careful. Some of these are a little bit smaller than others. They're still gonna taste delicious though. Our cookies are fully cooled, yay. Now we can fill them with our Oreo cream filling. So I already kind of matched up the sizes of cookies, flipped over half of them, because those are gonna be our bottoms, and then the other ones are gonna be our tops. And we're just gonna put a dollop of filling in the middle, like that. You may not need all your filling. Some of them are bigger than others, so you can fill them a little bit more. You might even be able to put more in. You just don't want them too full, because I made them way too full the first time. And then you just take your top and you try to squish it evenly. There you go. There's our Oreo cookie. These are pretty big cookies. You probably only need one. Show you one more here. It's satisfied to squeeze. It's about the right amount of filling, eh? Oh, and I wanted to show you this too. If you aren't sure if you're going to have a crispy cookie or not, if you tap it like that and it sounds hard, then you succeeded in getting a nice crispy cookie. Believe me, I did a lot of those tests. <laughs> and it's so weird that some of them weren't crispy and I had to figure out the reason why they weren't crispy. And it was a challenge. But if you do it just like I show you, you're gonna have a nice crispy cookie. And they do get soft in milk. It takes a while, but they do get soft. Ooh, smooshing is so much fun. Smoosh. <laughs> Time for some milk. So these cookies are 14 net carbs total. So however many cookies you make out of it is how many net carbs you're gonna have. And then the filling, we have about half of it left. So the only thing that was in here that really counts for anything is the butter. So the more you use, the more fat you'll have in your cookies. But other than that, these are less than the Catalina Crunch Oreo cookies that just came out. Yes, they're prettier. You know, they actually look like an Oreo. But I actually looked at the ingredients and I'm not a fan. There is cane sugar in it and rice flour. So I wanted to make a non-grainy, keto-friendly cookie that doesn't have cane sugar in it. If I let it sit longer, the filling would solidify more, but I'm too impatient. Yeah, it's a crunchy Oreo cookie. You do have to leave it in the milk a long time to get it soft though. Don't got time for that today. Super crunchy, sweet, delicious, chocolatey. Hit the spot for an Oreo cookie for sure. These are so good. Now I can't smile too much because I had probably have Oreo bits all in my teeth. The worst cookie to eat on camera. I hope you guys try this recipe at home. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite cookie is. I'm sure I'm going to be doing some more cookies using this recipe. I'm thinking. Girl Scout Thin Mint Cookies. So if you enjoy this content, please consider hitting the subscribe button, hitting the thumbs up, sharing with your friends, and I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys. Yeah.